Hello, good evening. How's everyone doing? So, just get ready. Um, yeah, so I've got an hour tonight. I'm not feeling 100%. Oops. Got the volume on. That went up. Yeah, so we'll give it an hour and uh, we'll do as much as we can. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> um, so, you know, everyone who thinks they're going to have a quiet summer and take the summer off and nothing's going to happen in crypto and they'll come back in September, make lots of money. All of these altcoins are kind of threatening to do stuff while people aren't around. And that's a little bit annoying. So really nothing has, you know, since we got into this sideways range at the beginning of May, and if I take these fibs from the lower way, and uh, this, if we take the high fibs from the highs that we made in June 2019 to the lows that we made in March of this year, we've been stuck underneath the 61.8 fib, but we haven't been able to break the 50% fib. It's like um, a staircase, if you like. If we do, because we're in that golden ratio zone, we know that we would normally drop down to the 38.2, that's down here at 7,500. Or we might just do one of those false breakdowns to these previous lows, tag this 200 moving average and fly higher. You know, <clears throat> I could see either one of those scenarios. But at the moment, what's been happening is we're not even really getting close to it. We just keep, you know, buying the dip. So people who want to short this are not doing very well in Bitcoin. At the moment, we're rallying. We've got flat moving averages. The 20 is below the 50. Normally, when you would see it this way around, <coughs> it's very unusual to break above the 50 more often than not. This is where the scenario where you'll see that retest of the lows or that double bottom or um, uh, a pullback. So, but if we did, if we were to break above that 50 moving average, plus this trend line uh, and break out. And, and that would be a third touch of a trend line, which is very often a false break. So I wouldn't be surprised if the first move here was a false break and then a pullback. And then possibly we retest these lows and possibly we don't and, and we just do a shallow pullback and carry on higher. I'm really not sure which and it's summer trading. If we were to break this sort of 8,750, I think we would retest 8,450. And if we didn't bounce sharply, then 7,500. But I'm really not feeling it. I don't feel like the market wants it to go down there. Maybe I'm wrong. So, you know, markets can correct. Sometimes they don't correct in price. Normally, if we would like this to be a big wave one, normally we would expect this to retrace somewhere to sort of 50% or 61.8. But sometimes instead of doing that, markets will correct in time instead of price. And that may very well be what we are seeing here. So how to trade it? Well, I haven't got any Bitcoin at the moment mainly because we're underneath these daily moving averages. And the risk is, you know, that we really could just meet resistance here and uh, take another swing lower. And so I have got, like, I'm not flat. I have got altcoin positions, but I don't have any Bitcoin positions. For me, a daily close, though, above 9,500, and I would put some back into Bitcoin. And the main reason I would do that is if Bitcoin decides to have a bit of a run, he really kind of sucks all the... Um, all the momentum out of alts, doesn't he? And, you know, what you can end up with is, you know, it's all about Bitcoin. So I wouldn't want to miss a move like that. So that means that the alts I'm trading, I would put a stop in in Bitcoin. And if I got stopped in the alt, I would go back into Bitcoin. That's all rather than a tether at the moment or other fear alternatives. So that's where we are with Bitcoin. A little bit of sideways in F, which is much more bullish. The corrective pattern is really much clearer. You know, here we are. We've made this lovely look A, B, C corrective pattern. And if we break out here to the upside and above these highs and in F, if we go from this high to low, that's the 786 fib. We got rejected back at above 246 in F. We've got a big time breakout and a new swing higher underway. And F is kind of leading. F is ahead of Bitcoin. If we take a look at F against Bitcoin, uh, we can see this is why alts are doing so well. When F does outperforms Bitcoin, uh, altcoins tend to do well. We've been in this sideways range. In this sideways range, we're after today's move, we're about to have the highest close 
in F that we have had since April. So, you know, if we look at close prices, this is a breakout. It's not obviously until we clear these highs, but it's looking very good, isn't it, for, for that. Um, interestingly, talking about putting trend lines on the close prices rather than the tails, it's um, a lot of people have a really successful strategies with RSI trend lines for that same reason. The close prices do tend to work. So it looks like next leg higher underway in F Bitcoin. And there we go. I'm looking for this big 50%. Clearly, these previous highs, and they're at 0 0.0259, are going to be trouble. And once we get ahead of them, where are we looking for? Well, for me, I'm looking for this big 50% level that we didn't quite reach uh, before, and I'm looking for 28,951 28, in F Bitcoin. And so I think that alts could unless we hit trouble at that previous high, uh, continue to outperform. And I think F dollar on a breakout above 246 is an epic looking move. And I'm gonna move my fibs up then. Say so 258, you know, might be a little bit sticky, but 305 next and we'll see how we go. And this is, would be, this would be a big uh, channel breakout for F and good for everything, I think. So we can see there's our parallel channel. So we would be breaking out of this parallel channel. And when you break out of a channel which contains a price, you've changed the trend. That's our trend uh, reversal. So F, 250, 246, 254 is a bit of resistance. And 300s, I think we're on our way to the 300s next. And hopefully new highs um, for 2020 and so on. So that's how I'm... I'm I'm feeling optimistic about Bitcoin and F, but we have not broken out yet. Now, the big surprise today was in Ripple. Uh, Ripple Tether. Huge, huge bullish move in Ripple Tether. Now, if we take a look at where we did, where did we bounce from? Was it somewhere we expected? Because I actually thought that we had further to fall, to be honest, when I looked at Ripple. Um, I felt like a uh, bit more of a downtrend, but... <laughs> Let's take these measured moves away. The reason is that we didn't quite tag this 50% level before, but I think it now counts as a 50% reversal. So it may be that we've done a, a correction here in, in Ripple, ABC, ABC, and then final leg down. And so this is the correction over a new leg higher underway in Ripple. Also, this is going to be a very positive sign. If we draw this as a declining wedge in Ripple, I'm going to say that on the top side, our resistance comes in at this daily uh, 200, sorry, not 250 moving average here in this trend line resistance. And that's around 0.1924. Now, that's a little bit woolly, isn't it? So let's put a thing on. We'll say this 30 point, if we use this 38.2 fib, we'll say above 0.1945. Again, this is a third line of a touch trend line. Very often, third lines of trend lines are false breakouts first, pull back, and then you find. So don't buy the first breakout. If it's going to break out, buy the retest. If it's a false breakout, it won't give you a pullback on a retest. It will come back and do a bigger move, okay? Just uh, something I've learned the hard way over the years. So looking very good in Ripple Tether. How do we look in uh, Ripple Bitcoin? Where is the support if you wanted to buy it back today? I would say there's 20 moving average. So, and I would say, um, uh, hold on one second. Let's look at this on an hourly. Maybe not that far, actually. Point one eight two eight. I'm going to say that looks pretty. One because I think if this is one wave two, and we've done one two, and this is a wave three, the most common retrace is around thirty eight point two. So that would be point one eight two eight. But if we come a little bit lower, point one eight one. So that's where I'd be looking for a pullback and a buy for Ripple Tether. And if we look at Ripple Bitcoin, we should be, because we really do want to be 
smashing it against Bitcoin and we really are today. We're back above. See how all the way down this daily 20 moving average was resistance. Now it's support. And so we can say halfway back here in Ripple, we should see more upside and at least up to this 50 moving average. And then there's a bit of a pivot level here. That low, like that. I think. <clears throat> 2050, 2056. That's uh, next resistance, most likely for um, Ripple Bitcoin. And then above there, happy days. If we can close and hold above 2056, we're looking for the 200 moving average next. A uh, bit of a wobble level again here with this double bottom level, sort of a double bottom level here. So these levels, oh look, it comes all the way from here. There we go. There's our next resistance level. And then where's our first big fib level going to come in? We need to go kind of in Ripple Bitcoin. It's back to this 886 fib level, isn't it? So 2620 and the weekly 50 moving average would be my third target. But yes, so small signs that Ripple is turning around like a lot of alts. At the moment, though, this is still a downtrend. This is still a downtrend until we take out this high. We need to make a higher high and then we need to go beyond that and get above this 50 moving average. Um, so positive signs. But if, if all we did was this and then we went lower from here, then we haven't really done, you know, we haven't really turned it around. So we need to be a little bit careful about um, premature celebrations. 1970 then, really good support to buy pullbacks in Ripple Bitcoin against. I think it looks great. Monero, what a heartbreaker Monero was. This one, when all the privacy coins were having a bit of a rally, uh, you know, the Havens and the ZRXs and so on, um, I thought this was wedge consolidation and a pretty nice breakout, but we had really strong resistance. Just this last swing lower high to low, this 50% level and this 200 moving average were too much of a combination. And the problem with that is that when you stop at a 50% moving uh, level, you tend to come back 50%. So if that's if we rallied up 50% here, we need to come back to 50%. We haven't quite got here. Here, after this high, we need to tag this level. So I feel like we've got a little bit lower to go before Monero finds support. And if, if we don't, if we're going to rally without coming down and tagging that left level, then it kind of needs to do something really spectacular. So 6,770 would be where I expect um, Monero Bitcoin to find support. And I don't think we've quite bottomed yet, unfortunately. If we look at it against the dollar, Monero dollar. Like everything, it looks really well supported, doesn't it? It's made a perfect Monero dollar here from the high look, made a perfect ABC correction to this low. Now we look to be rallying away. So it just means that Bitcoin is going to outperform a bit, you know, next leg higher if we can break out from this consolidation. And again, back above that daily 50 moving average, we should see our next leg higher. It's been a horrible sideways consolidation. Where are we? Some people are going to look at this and say, this is a, two, uh, a head and shoulders pattern with a bit of a sloping neckline. I suppose I could see that and I, if we got underneath the 200 moving average then clearly I would say look out below but for now you know we look pretty well supported and with this dead equal when head and shoulders patterns fail it's very often because they've made this equal measured move pattern and so if we break this to the upside instead from this consolidation that's what I would be looking for so one way or another, Monero is going to make a move. But whilst we're in the middle, to be quite honest, we could go either way. And I think against Bitcoin, we've got one more little dip. Okay, Litecoin. Let's take a look at Litecoin. 
I have been a little bit negative on, on Litecoin for a while, but these coins all look the same. They look like they all should be rolling over, don't they? But we've had a bit of a perky uh, day. Again, are we correction complete? Did we do anything like a nice equal swing here? Something like that? No. But back above this 61.8 level kind of makes you think the correction probably is over. I think if we got, let's call it a horizontal level, because that's really what it is. Uh, back above this, for now, this is major resistance for uh, Litecoin dollar. Every time we've tagged this 50, this blue moving average, the 50 daily moving average, since the beginning of June, it's been resistance. Here, 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 here. So we really have to close above this if we're going to make some progress to the upside. Otherwise, we could just as easily go back to the lows. The fibs don't help us in this one, except maybe from these highs. Yeah, not helping us. So above this 50 moving average sends us back to the top of the wedge, hopefully the 200 day moving average. And then above the 200 moving average in Litecoin dollar, we're going up again. But for now, this is really bottom of a wedge, sideways consolidation. And if this really is a triangle, remember they're very often five waves, not three. So we would go, and so it would go like this. So we'll have a rally and then we have A, B, C, D, E. So we need to be a little bit careful that we don't uh you know you don't get too bullish and we don't f f you know break out here if this is just an abc correction then above 49.30 we'll carry on higher um yeah it's not that it's not my favorite chart i have to say litecoin litecoin bitcoin you know because let's see if we've got a chance that this is going to start outperforming because my issue with this chart is uh, when I put the fibs on from these lows to these highs I feel like these levels have been quite well at least recently respected and underneath this 786 fib level I feel like we're headed lower unless we break back above it again so I don't really want to get bullish Litecoin against Bitcoin unless we get back above 5429. So if you're buying it, if you like this little double bottom that we're making here, you know, to me, double bottoms just mean we've stopped going, double do bottoms or double tops just mean we've stopped going up or down and we're in sideways consolidation. Unless we break the pivot in the middle, we're just sideways. So if we did break this pivot in the middle, so if we break above 5,000, then we're going to look for 5,429 and then above there we can get you know really bullish so that would be where we would be looking for but otherwise this is just consolidation some back and fill it if you like in a, a downtrend hi christopher i think we've got v chain on the list i seem to have run everything together so uh that wasn't very good editing on my part was it Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I will uh, I will do V-Chain. So Litecoin, yeah, you know, when you're going sideways and toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bitcoin and the value of Bitcoin goes up, then the value of your Litecoin goes up. So don't worry about it. Um, but to be honest, you might as well be in Bitcoin in this one unless it reverses that trend. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is ZRX, another privacy coin we're going to start on the daily chart here so 50% levels you know they're very often sticky so we had a big rally pulled back and this new rally we were looking for it to uh, start you know on our way to new highs if you like and it, what we ended up doing was a kind of funky shaped inverted head and shoulders pattern with this resistance here in the middle being the 50%, now that we are above this 50% level, it should be support so that we can carry on higher. So here, when I look at this now, to be honest, this is quite tempting. We drop, we've been back and forward through it, but new highs. So first off, the conservative 
in me would say new highs here above 46.42. I think it's worth having a go and my target would be 62.64, which is the first big target level. Um, and short term here, looking at this turning higher, is it tempting? Yeah, you know, it is. This little 15 minute inverted head and shoulders pattern is holding these moving averages is very tempting. So I think it's a nice little long here to at least the top of this trend line. Expect a wobble here. And then if we can break out, you're on track for that big 62, 64 level. So yeah, ZRX Bitcoin looks pretty good to me. Another swing higher setting up and we've pulled back to a good support level and held the support. If we have a quick peek at ZRX US dollar, we've got pretty much the same thing going on, haven't we? We broke out from this channel, bit of a messy back test. This was a parallel channel, look, so we do it like this, parallel channel. Um, built a bit of a base here. Again, if we put the high to low on, this 50% level is where we keep getting stuck. 0.43, so above 0.43, rock and roll. We're very close to 0.43, aren't we? So could you buy this little 15 minute bottoming pattern ahead of there? Yeah, because you know where your resistance is. If we fail there, you know you're wrong. Uh, but if you buy it here, you're ahead of the buffer, if you like, because then uh, when it pulls back and retests your entries down here, it's not going to get touched. But I'm looking for a breakout above 0.43 in ZRX US dollar. And next leg higher to begin and let's just look at these Coinbase prices. If I was trading this at Coinbase, put this down here, down here. I know there's more history, don't worry. Okay, so this is us above the 236. So we're looking for 0.574 and 0.713. 50% of the big drop in ZRX dollar. If we look at it quickly, ZRX tether, it should be pretty similar. We've got just a bit <laughs> more history here. Hang on. Chart tidy up, emergency chart tidy up. Okay. Here at ZRX Tether, that sticky level I have that I've got is the 61.8.422. And above there I would like to see next leg higher begin. I'm gonna zoom out to the monthly. We're at new highs, aren't we, against Tether? We have to So 0.5619 would be the 1.618 extension target if I was using this chart, monthly chart. So that's the upside projection, 0.566 for ZRX Tether. If we can break higher from this, the problem is this is the alternative view. That's the bullish view. The bearish view is this is an A, B, C here or and so then we've gone a three wave up, three wave down. So that is that finished and this is the new leg beginning. If it is, we should see, start to see some really nice impulsive moves higher. If it's not, and this is just a big A, and then this just is just a big B, we've still got one more leg to come, haven't we? And catch up this 200 moving average. So that's why we need to be a little bit careful. It may be, you know, these B legs for me, I, I find the hardest to read. And so this could be what we're looking at. And if we were, maybe this second leg here is just 60, wait. It doesn't look like it, but if we, if we got up here and hit this measured move level, 0.443 and then turned lower, that would say equal measured move correction. So we need to be a little bit careful. We're not completely out of the woods and we're not guaranteed really we're going higher unless we can get above 46.54 and hold above it. So need to be a little bit careful. 
Short term though, these closing prices here are the resistance. That's where we need to move beyond, aren't they? Those closing prices. Okay, so ZRX, lots of potential, but I prefer them at new highs. XVG, I know everyone, never, we never get what we want though, do we? Um, Hold on, I'm having a, I'm having a senior moment here. Here's Verge. Okay. Now, this is another one when you look at it. This is another one when you look at it and you think, gosh, is this correction complete and this new leg going to be beginning or is it just a one, two, three, you know, and a bigger correction what I like about this one is the remember that thing we talked about with the 50% and the 50% so this pullback was to the 50% in verge and this rally was to the 50% here look so when we pull back this pullback uh, sorry if we pull back this way this pullback got exactly to the 50%. So we're doing that thing where we're coiling up, we're 50% back, 50% back, 50% back. And when that happens, you look for a break of the pattern and the pa break of the pattern tells you which way next. And this has just happened today. So normally we would expect this just to rally, wouldn't we? 50% here and then pull back and, and we haven't, we've broken the pattern. And it looks like we've broken the pattern higher. So looking very good for uh, a swing. Need to really make sure that we make new highs to keep going. But if this first swing was to the 50 50 uh, percent, I would be looking for a big 886 up at the top here. Uh, next on this next swing higher. And something like that. Up here at 100. So if we get back above 85, we're looking for 100 and then maybe a pullback and then above 100 new highs for XVG. So it feels like we're finally starting to break, break that consolidation pattern. So looking good. OK. Really, we only know we're going high about new highs. Casper says, how about the SPX? It seems it correlates. It really does. And I feel like, and it used to be that, you know, Bitcoin would turn first. But for the first time, I feel like the S&P is the one pulling Bitcoin higher for a change. So um, it, it definitely does. It's very correlated. The NASDAQ is very correlated with Bitcoin, for sure. Okay. Verge then. Bit of a tricky level. And we really do need to be above 85 if we're going to break this pattern to the upside. And then we look for 100 and so on. New highs, 128. Um, next one we're going to look at is ICX. I'm sorry I drew everything together. Now I bought ICX. I've actually got a position in ICX. Um, mainly because as a pullback continuation pattern, I really like this inverted head and shoulders. I really like how we bounce from the daily 200 moving average. In fact, there's loads to like about this chart, isn't there? Okay, so in fact, if we break the neckline, you know, because we'll go twice this distance and an ICX Bitcoin even higher, hopefully. This is the equal measured move level. So the, then we have to say, okay, well, if a head and shoulders pattern fails, it usually fails because it's not a head and shoulders, but an ABC so or, or a corrective pattern. So if this is an ABC here, where we've stopped is where we are at 61.8. This swing is 61.8 of the first swing. And that's a very common place for a correction. So now it becomes really important that we don't come back too far and we stay in an uptrend. Otherwise, we will have reversed at that bearish pattern. So if we uh, look at those, where is that one that I just took off here? So for me, we stay in an uptrend if we don't break, come back more than 236 from this low to this high. 
And so that's 3767. So that's my line. And if you can see on the chart, that's also a pretty good support and resistance level on the chart. So as long as we stay above this and hold this level, I'm going to stay long and look for ICX to keep going higher. But for now, um, yeah, this is where my stop is. And then it doesn't mean that it's all over. It just means that we're going to see a bigger pullback or a bigger correction. Or this may not be even a head and shoulders. It just may be a wedge pattern like this. You know, we're going to tight, really coil up in this one before we get a move. Um, so we we'll start going like this and say, OK, so uh, that's what I'm watching for. I'm going to stay longer as long as we're above 37.67. If you are looking to buy some, a nice bullish reversal here that took out um, these highs, that would say back to the top of the range again, and then we'll see where we go from there. Above 38.35. Okay, so that's ICX. Next one is OMG. Again, I apologize the way I typed. Everything's run together. OMI's go. Is this starting a new upswing. Let's start on a weekly chart. Because this was really, um, this is really funky how we have this lovely big swing and then we're sitting here with a really nice shallow pullback uh, after this swing in a very, very tight range for weeks now. So we're not really going anywhere, are we? Unless we break out of this. Where are we sitting? Well, we're sitting on exactly from this low to this high 50% back. That's quite good because it points to a correction. So 1573, that's why this is support. And we're sitting on it now. We'll go back to the daily. Because I have a feeling like we've already done one kind of from here because this is this 50%. I would expect a rally from here to 50% of the drop. And then we'll see what happens there. So that would mean 1951. So we can tentatively buy some OMG if we made a new high, but we have an important resistance level at 1951 that we have to get above if we're going to continue higher, make new highs, and carry on up the fib levels, if you like. So we would retest 2366, 2880, and then. Uh, 33.94. I kind of like this 28.80 and there's support and resistance in the middle, but we'll see how we go. So potentially setting up back above 17.29 will take us to 19.54. Above 19.54, I think we're in a new upswing in OMG. Looking quite good, but really does need to get above this resistance. Uh, Qtum's here as well. Let's take a look at Qtum. This is looking like one of those. I really do actually like this pattern. So this does look like an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And this does look like a potential trying to break out. Um, the problem with any time you have a, a sloping pattern is that the horizontal levels are still support and resistance. So these horizontal levels here, which come from this first high, are still the support and resistance that we need to get above if we're going to go. So we've broken out, we've hit these previous high zone, this kind of resistance zone, and now we're going to see if we can find support on this little pullback here, shallow pullback, and then carry on higher. In terms of candlesticks, this is not a reversal yet. When you have a big green thrust day, what tends to happen is 50% of that candle, the tends to be support and resistance. So as long as we stay in the top half, like we have here with this little inside bar, it's not a bearish harami or a bearish reversal yet. It could turn into one if we continue lower, more than 50%, but for now, it's a little pause day, if you like. We're just having a little inside back and fill day. So a little bit of sideways, again, we rally back more than 50%. Hopefully next swing, higher. So let Qtum consolidate. Don't come back too far. Wait for the next swing to begin. But yeah, and then a breakout, a proper breakout. Now, a proper breakout would be good because, okay, if you have a head and shoulders pattern, you measure from the head 
to the neckline like this then you project it from the breakout point and that's your target that gives us a target of around 2400 big 236 fib would be our second target at 2930 so yeah lots of resistance to get through we haven't reversed the trend yet in Qtum but it's um, this little shallow pullback today is quite uh, positive okay okay I'm going to look at Funfair and VeChain. Lots of people asking for VeChain. Funfair. This is a weekly chart of Funfair. So I put my fibs on from this high to this low. This 236 fib level was resistance this week. And then when we got above it four weeks ago, it became support. We haven't been able to close back underneath it. If we look at it here, it's a bit messy on the daily. But that's basically what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this consolidation to finish and we'll go higher. How about if this was an equal measured move? That would be a good look, wouldn't it? Let's put the four hour on. And I kind of think it was. So maybe we're getting ready to go. And that means from this high to this low was equal from this high to this low. Not quite there, were we? Close enough, but not quite. In fact, this is a horizontal. But it's pretty clear we break down below there, doesn't it? I hate these little small number charts. So this is the fifth level, 39. I would like to see 39 hold as support and we turn again higher from it. And if we do, I think that Funfair is setting up a nice long. We're looking for 50 and then 60. 50 is a 38.2 fib, 60. Is the big 50% retrace and then third target final is 70 that is where we will be I'm just gonna if I measure from here to here and project it from this low uh, 70 is where this swing would be 0.618 of the first swing quite a common place to stop in a correction okay Ibrahim can I show you where the head and shoulders is? Yeah, I'm going to go back one because I think you don't mean fun fair. I think you mean Qtum. Here's the head and shoulders. Okay, uh, let's hide these moving averages so it's really nice and clean. Okay, so here's the left shoulder. Here's the head. And here's the right shoulder so there's the head inverted okay when you see it <laughs> you probably shouldn't draw faces on. Uh, that's the head and shoulder that's the inverted head and shoulders pattern okay and then sometimes so for example what was the one where we thought we saw um, I can't remember was it Monero I think anyway okay so we've looked at Keytum, Funfair now, VeChain, all the people waiting for VeChain. Hooray, here we go, VeChain. Uh, nearly VeChain. Hold on. I keep looking at this Einsteinium and thinking it's about to go. Okay. Yay, big trend reversal in VeChain. Uh, what I like about VeChain as well. Um, this these highs here clearly we've flipped the trend this is VeChain against Binance it's a weekly chart I'm going to say that if you haven't got a position in VeChain at the moment with this little stall I think you need to wait for a pullback if you're going to get one I really like how the fibs are being respected this 236 fib was resistance resistance and it was also support here 38.2 lines up with the level so if we're looking for where we might pull back to in a few you know and have a few weeks consolidation 150 in v chain is it so if you're all long you're and you're thinking where would i not want it to come back underneath you would not want it to come back underneath 150. if you did we would see a bigger correction at least 50 percent of this big thrust week and potentially back to the 236 fib so that's where for me trend support is if i was to 
I go all the way from these lows, I would say the 236 fib normally, and you can see that they line up together, don't they? Or the 236 fib is actually a little bit lower, so that adds weight to that being trend support here. Okay, so 148. So as long as we don't close below 148, we stay in an uptrend and, and you can ride the wave. If you're looking for this to find support, be patient. Let this have a bit of time. It's done one swing. Here's our first swing of correction. So it just needs a bit of time to sit here. It might go quickly, but I feel like we need one more dip back to 158, 140, 148, 150. Uh, before we go again and rechain Bitcoin. Okay, I hope that's okay, does it? I hope nobody wants it again against the dollar. Um, if we, if you are trading it against Tether, for example, let's take a look because we are also at a bit of a resistance level in Tether. And a bit, the bit scarier is that this is a big 50%. So if you stop at a 50%, you know you'll come back 50% if you reverse here. So it needs to be that you don't reverse. And so that again, we're going to use that 236 fib as our sign of the reversal. So as long as we stay above 1334, keep your longs, move your stop. Because if we drop below 1334 from here without going any higher, then we could come back to 9268. And that's too much to give back, really. You don't want to do that. So expect some consolidation and then of course mark in the new swing high mark in the 61.8 so we'll stay in an uptrend so for now we're we're doing a little bit of sideways consolidation in an uptrend it's going to take a day or two hopefully we'll do a nice little shallow correction like this one and then we'll just carry on higher so v chain v chain tether v chain bitcoin at a bit of a pause level don't let it come back too far Okay, next one we're going to do, I know that all, we're going to do Metal and EOS. I don't know why they all ran together, it's just bloody f YouTube, hold on. A bad workman always wears blames his tools, that's me. Okay, Metal, sorry. <clears throat> I don't really still throw it, gosh. Okay. Look at this consolidation, uh, really tight around these daily moving averages here in Metal Bitcoin. Whenever you see that, it usually precedes a really big move. And that, I'm hoping, is what we see here. You know, see how we're getting in a tighter and tighter range? The problem is, when you're like this, it doesn't really uh, point to a breakout unless you when you cross these moving averages unless you also break out of the range sometimes you can draw it as a horizontal you know for example if we drew this as a sloping trend line and we broke out we would still be looking to make sure that we cleared the horizontal resistance as well because sometimes really tight wedges can come become just broader wedges and then they carry on so you do you need to be a little bit careful Let's see if the fibs help us with this at all. Look at this mess of a chart. So we're going to go from this high to this low. And we're going to say when we get above the 236 fib, that will be our first target. And when we get above it, we've changed the trend. So if we break out from our wedge consolidation, our first target is 41.96. And then above 41.96, we're in a new bigger upswing, I think. So that's how I see metal. Uh, a bit stuck in the middle here. I wouldn't dump it, it, but it could really go either way. Okay, next one is EOS. Haven't looked at EOS for a while. I'm going to look at EOS against... Um, the dollar and then we'll look at it against Bitcoin. When I look at it against the dollar here, it's very uninspiring. And it's very uninspiring because I took this swing and we couldn't get beyond the 236 Fib level. 
if I bring it down to this swing here, we can get beyond this 38.2, you know, fib. So that keeps us in quite a downtrend. All of these moving averages on the weekly are still in a downtrend. So we need to do something to turn this around. For example, here we would need to get above this. We would need to break out and get above this weekly 20 moving average, which is at 2.7. If we did get above the 20 moving average, we would be on track then to retest this 50 at 3.09 and then maybe a swing higher. But for the moment, just I'm just really quite neutral. Now, sometimes, for example, if we were to measure this, and this was like one of those 61 point, it's messy. Um, then we could point to a whole new big swing higher. If I measure from this low to high, this is like a nice tidy 50%, which it is. Then that could also point to this being first leg, B leg, and another leg that makes a new high as well. So let's draw it. I'll take the fibs away. And we'll just put, so 50%, remember 50%, 50% brings another 50%. So we've got to get above 50%. We're going to mark that here at this 2.65. Okay, we'll take them away, clean up the chart. So 2.65 is our level that we've got to close above to break out of this declining wedge that we are in. That also lines up with this trend line. And so if we do that, then we can say, okay, yeah, this hell is over and we're on our way up to retest 3.11. If we get up to here to 2.65, do a little bit of a false breakout or can't, then I have to say, I think we could be in line for another swing lower in this, you know. So yeah, let's be a little bit careful. So if you buy this, make sure we break 265 to keep going and then we can retest 3.11. Let's look at EOS Bitcoin. So we do see signs that maybe we're gonna see another big leg higher. Are we seeing the same in EOS Bitcoin? Yeah, I suppose we are, aren't we? Above the daily 50 is quite something for any any altcoin. If we close here, that would be quite something. I'm going to take that line away. So if we close here, short term, we've reversed the trend. Remember, uh, a trend is lower, downtrend is lower lows and lower highs. And so if we take out these little highs here, we've got a short term uptrend. If we take out this high here, you know, we've got a much bigger daily uptrend going on and, and more of a reversal as well. So and then we would be looking for this 200 moving average. So uh, whilst we're here like this, flat moving averages, it's a little bit sideways. So we kind of need to break out. So that would be our first target, 29.54 and then 34.90. Yeah, EOS Bitcoin, first day closing above the daily 50, does point to much more upside and shallow pullbacks. We shouldn't really go back underneath this daily 50 again. So in EOS Bitcoin, you know, it's probably coming from somewhere like, yeah. Yeah, like 27.40, I don't think I've got a level, I'll get a level, there we go. Uh, 27.65, bit of a shallow pullback and then hopefully it carries on. If it doesn't, if it comes back more than that, if it comes back more than the 236 fib, or if you get a daily close back underneath the 50, we do not have the bullish breakout that we were hoping for. So watch out in EOS. <coughs> Gosh, I don't know now, I'm not even halfway. Um, I'm just gonna get some water, I've got a bit of a sore throat, sorry, hold on. Here we go. Okay, Zcash, ZEC. This is an exciting one. So here we go with this one. 
remember so big fat triangle third remember third touch false breakout has pulled back to support and now we're going to have another go and now we're going to find out whether we're going to break out for real or not here's a small point when this happens you kind of need to widen your trend line because if you're going to break out and then it might be that this is what everyone's looking at now so just um bear that in mind but otherwise so far so good this was a pretty strong day it, we've after you know five days sitting on the 20 moving average we decided we're going up again and zcash hopefully breaks out now let's see if some of these If we do this now, we can put some horizontal levels on where our resistance is. And if we look at this rally, you know, I've missed the 786 for that. Okay, here we go. 786 all the way back. This is the 61.8 level, I think. So we're above this 50%. They seem to be working well, these levels. So next target is 6226. As long as we close tonight above it and then if we close above 6226 we're going to retest 6810 and so on so we need to use this like a staircase make sure each level, each level we get above we find support from so here for example if we're looking at the hourly and this 50% level in the middle that we just got above in ZEC if we're going to do a shallow correction and stay in the up and uptrend then we'll hold this level and carry on. If we're going to turn this into some bigger, gosh, head and shoulders pattern, I hope not, then we'll do that bigger thing where we come back to these lows. So we'll do this, break this, and then we'll come down here and hopefully find support again. So you can use that level, you can get back in at the level you got out on if it comes back above it again. So let's go back to the daily because this is all very choppy so there's our fib levels that we're looking for clearly though when we look at this we really haven't got a trend have we in zcash bitcoin if we look at these lows here and we kind of fudge it here in the middle we kind of fudge it here at the highs you know we really have got a bit of a sideways range so any setup you get that gets you long we really do need above these highs to be um, going somewhere and if we are if this was a and then we've done b and then this is a new big leg higher let's measure where we might go where the equal measured move would take us and beyond so i'm doing it from this low because this is at one and then and then so on so it's clear the top of the range is the 61.8 at 660 and then 8126 is where we go if we break above 660 first bearish resistance in zcash bitcoin okay i hope that's okay i hope we didn't want a uh, us dollar Uh, links are chart I like a lot. Excuse me. Zilliqa. I don't know if I'm going to have time. I've done an hour and I'm only halfway through. Um, Zilliqa was one of those kind of um, bellwether coins. You know, it was sitting on a bull bear line and it broke down, which was a bit disappointing. Um, however, I'm going to go to Link. I really do like Link today. Uh, I feel like Link is trying to push to new highs. Let's go to the weekly and see where we're. So <laughs> we are at Zinc Bitcoin. We are trying to push to new highs. Last week, we had the highest weekly close that we've ever had. And so for me, you know, this and holding above it should see us continue higher. To retest this 1.618 level at 54,778, and if we can keep going in link Bitcoin, I really think we can see 79,500. But we have to break above this 1.618.
resistance level and this one has this habit of making a move and then big sideways swings link bitcoin um which is okay but you know it's not always the easiest to stay on the ride is it so we're bullish and we're looking for 54778 next here we are on the daily we've had this new highs what's cool about new highs is we're holding these new highs look and sideways and then just waiting for the next leg up to begin when is it gonna be I have to feel I think it's now actually but that's just me let's see where that 50% level is again that's always the one that catches us I look scale no I can't be yeah no I think this one I like this one anyway for me on on the way I trade you know if we can clear these highs here and if we can clear 53,000 I think we're on track for 55,000 next um, sometimes with these four hour buy setups I like to look at it on a 15 minute just to get a tighter entry here we had a big pullback little inverted head and shoulders pattern bunched up moving averages and a really nice kind of long um, an hour ago this was wasn't it in chain link so if you missed it now you need to see another 15 minute pullback. You need to see it stop, some consolidation, not come back too far, some red candles, and then up again for uh, Link Bitcoin. I love it. So back to the daily. We're looking for a retest of 54,778. And then above there, huge big target, 79,500. We're not going to go there in a straight line, but that would be my big target. Okay. Love link. ERD is next. Alron, this Alron has been on fire. Okay. Let's go to the weekly because I have these fib levels, but I have a feeling that no one else in the market and, and I'm using the spike and I have a lot of feeling like nobody else is looking at them. Uh, just because we got such a shabby reaction at this 236 fib level. So we'll wait and see. I have to say, I think 80 has the potential to give us a little bit of a stall before we carry on higher. So watch out for 80. If we get above 80, my measuring says 101 next, but let's look at, where else could we, I'm going to look at hit, no, it doesn't really have more history, yeah, watch out for 80 being resistance above 80, I'm looking for 101 next in Elrond, uh, but we may see a little bit of a pullback here, um, maybe 70, it's quite a lot to give back, don't give it all back. Okay, Searcoin, I might not, st I might stop being, making sense soon, I'm, I apologise. Okay, Searcoin. Um, I'm afraid to say that I'm not liking Searcoin. Um, I feel like let's put the I've got regular candles on this is see coin Bitcoin from the low that we made in January I measured this swing and projected it from here and we stopped at an exact equal measured move when you do that and then you drop back below the 61.8 level you usually retrace a lot more 786 of the whole move that means let me hide this so we go from this low to this high this means that we come back to this 200 day moving average all the way down here on the next swing 786 of the whole pattern so I think we've got further to fall at the moment we were pretty neutral we're in between these daily moving averages and I'm rooting you know yeah now if it did something spectacular um, I still don't have a kind of valid buy setup 
I would like just like to see this come back further, unfortunately. Sorry about that. So no, Seer Coin's not on the menu for me. I know that this is 50% back of the big thing and doesn't it look great? Yeah, it does. You know, maybe it'll bounce 50% up here, but I still think that it owes us another leg lower. So I'm probably going to stay away for now. Okay. Sorry, it's not better news in Seer Coin. K and C is next. I can't remember what K and C is. Sorry. I'm struggling a bit here. I think I maybe have written it down wrong. COS is requested anyway. Let's do that one, uh, which is. Contentos. I think I meant to write down Kyber Network, which is KNC. So I'm going to talk about KNC. Uh, full disclosure, I'm long KNC. I did tweet the chart. I really do like this chart pattern. Let's start with the weekly chart. This is a head and shoulders pattern. It's not actually my favourite kind because I feel like it was a little bit unbalanced. Uh, my favourite head and shoulders patterns are when the left shoulder and the right shoulder are equal but I think it nevertheless it was one clearly we had some horizontal resistance here from this high that caused a bit of a problem um, and until we got above it we really didn't reverse the trend once we did got above, get above it we kind of flew so I put my fibs on from in Binance from all the way from the all-time high to the all-time low and um, we call this the 236 fib I liked it because there was a bit of support and resistance here and so far at the moment it looks like we're trading above it and so as long as we continue I'm not even sure I've drawn the fibs correctly you know I like to see that a reaction at the 236 fib to tell me that so as long as we sit here and stay above 17545 I'm staying long and let's zoom out again and I'm gonna put my uh, fib projections off of here this was the 1.618 you can see that we stopped out let's change the color so we can see it and then take them away okay and then 2.618 and so the next one for me so we had look I, I project I did this from a B C here okay we stopped at the 1.618 stop messy 2.618 next for me is 4.236 and that's my target 27,200 that's where we're looking for next in if even if we draw it like this I'm looking for 27,200 next I think that this consolidation as long as it stays above 17,000 should continue higher and uh, that's where I'm looking for in KNC is it quite ready to go yet no, it's still a little, it's still working off a bit of overbought uh, conditions. And so, no, I don't think it is. And it may even fall a little bit further. We'll have to wait and see. Ideally, though, I'd kind of like a little bit of this. That would be very nice. Thank you. Uh, KNC. But yeah, any lower before seven, below 17.545. I'm going to wait for a bigger correction and then buy it later. Okay, Kyber Network, KNC. Of course I of course I typed. I don't know what I was thinking. Contentos. Contentos is next. Uh yeah, now this one is a maybe. So maybe if we can recover this 200 moving average and hold it, but the 200 moving average for this contentos, and look at it here against Bitcoin. Isn't that accurate? You know, we were very messy around this 200 moving average uh, before. So I'm not sure that that's the, that reliable. Let's just say I think that we're in a bit of a consolidation. If it is a tightening wedge or a triangle or something like this, I think it's more likely that these highs will be resistance. And in between, you know, while the moving averages are all bunched up or until we kind of break out, 
I'm dead neutral. We could go either way, to be honest. We could just do another. We could just be A, B, and do another leg lower and retest the lows from here. So we need to be a little bit careful, contentos. It would be great if we held above the 200 moving average. If we break to the upside, my target's 132. If we break to the downside, we could see a retest of 53 in the low. So watch out and be careful. Okay, good luck in contentos. Wait and see what happens. OGN is next one. Ontology, another one struggling with the 200 day moving average. Flattening out moving averages and I'm not quite so, I have to say I'm not quite so bullish. But if you put a gun to it, so what if you've already got a position and you're riding out the fight? Well, because I think this is a declining wedge, I'm going to start from this high here. Uh, mainly because I really kind of like the reaction around this 236 Fib level. And so I'm looking for this level to be support on a pullback if this is just not a big, you know, what you don't want is to this turn into a bigger A, B, C correction. So let's use this level from, it comes all the way from here, like, as our support and resistance level that we would like to see held. It's a bit lower really, isn't it? From here. And the daily 20 moving average. And if we break the support zone, we're out and waiting for a bigger correction. So if you want to have it really tight, I would say 645. No daily close below 645. And I would say no trading below 637. Um, it should really hold above it if we're going to hold it. So that's our zone of support. Uh, but yeah, it's not trending. It's not. I don't have a great setup yet. And I'm looking at ontology, aren't I? Oh, why did I think that that was OM? Um, OGM. Looking at the wrong chart. Origin. Sorry, I'm feeling really fluey. I think there's something. Hold on. Here we go. Origin. Protocol. Neutral. This one could go either way. We've, I put my fibs on from high to low, and we can't get above the two three six fib. And so for me, that's a no no. It's not in an uptrend yet, and we're in a sideways range. Okay, so the pr level that we need to close above to change that and break to the upside is thirty two forty four, and we're just as much risk that we come down and retest the lows now as we are go higher because there is no trend in origin unfortunately these don't seem to work coming this way so I'm gonna not rely on them sideways range I'm not sure which way we go next in origin I'm sorry I, I would be neutral I would have my stop underneath this wedge okay and um, if we break down this, these previous lows and this 50 moving average would be where I would be looking for support here. This swing low, um, something like that. Uh, if we break to the upside, I'm a buyer. But whilst we're here going sideways, I don't think there's really anything we can do with Origin Protocol. It's really not clear. OK, BTS is the next one. I, I don't know how this what I typed got so messed up it's just a, a miracle here we go um, why can't I find it there it is BTS Shares. Finally, we got there. Yeah, I like this one. Now, I think there's a limited upside at the moment, unless we get above this 200 moving average, but I do like this one. 
I put my fib on from this high to this low and see how the 236 fib was resistance. It's at 255 and now that we're above it, it's support. So, and you can see here, I know it's a bit of a spiky chart, I've got high Kanashi on. Um, you can see resistance support. Anyway, we'll do it that way. <sighs> I need to go back to the high Kanashi because it's such a, yeah. If we look at the daily chart, right? This is a really good place for us to bounce from. I'm gonna do this. It's a back test. Let's take that away. It's a back test of this big 236 fib level. It's a back test of this potential neckline. It's a back test of the 200 day moving average. And we've made a base here really nicely. So what we need to do to be sure that we're going higher is break to the upside. And we've got to break above this daily 20 moving average and this 236 from this high to this low. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, now, so we big picture, that's our big picture view. Okay, I'll put this on. I know it's spiky, but that's the big picture view. So down on the hourly, how do we know we're going up again from here? This is where it's all messy and we need high Kanashi again. Okay, we put our fibs on from this high to this low. Okay, we're above the 236 fib, so I think that we are going higher on this hourly. And I'm a buyer, I think we'll go to 262 and then 268 and if we then start making a new high and above these 200 moving average on the hourly then I think we are going to make some progress uh, but slowly it's just starting to turn so 262 and then above 268 I'm really optimistic that this is a new swing higher and if it is let's go back to the daily okay our first target is going to be retest 280 and then 308 which is that bigger 50 percent retrace level so daily it's an hourly way to get into a daily setup here in bit shares it's a good looking chart and yes the breakout on the hourly if we hold above uh, carry on looks good got this moving average to worry about but it does look good Okay, next one we're going to look at is ELF. <laughs> I just, you know, when they have no trend, it's so frustrating. There really is no trend here, and this is coiling up. Okay, when you make a lower low and a higher low, it's narrower and narrower range. Uh, the unfortunate thing about this pattern is you see it very often in a wave four and very often it breaks with a trend which in this case would be lower elf Bitcoin. How about that I'm wrong though? How about that this was a new wave one up? This is not a triangle. This was an ABC correction complete and then we're starting wave three. If that's the case this is one two we've done what then this we should start to see some really powerful moves to the upside and we'll smash through this trend line so that's what we need to see if elf is going to start moving again weekly daily here very nice look abc correction back to the moving averages uh yeah for me this is an hourly setup so we could very well be seeing exactly that we don't want to fail here at the 60 percent so we're going to mark it 50 percent and that's at 11.59 in this previous high so yeah elf bitcoin love it now this is a very nice little trend going on each one of these pullbacks gets um Bought, I think it's a little too far gone. I would like to see a pullback and a retest of this four hour 200 moving average, and that would be tempting. It's at 1046. So pull back, hold support, and then that would be the look I would be looking for. Yeah, looks great. Elf. Not new high, great, but great pullback, long entry, great. Uh, Chilies.
I'm just gonna have some more water. Come past the hour. Hello. Okay. Um, I'm not feeling it in chillers, and I'll tell you why. Let's go to the weekly. It feels like another one that's just coiling up. It's getting into a narrower and narrower range. So we have this big swing, lower high, higher low, lower high. And so, you know, you keep, you have to buy the bottom, sell the ties of this range when it does this and wait for it to break out. And it's not really doing it yet. Um, yeah, so big fat weekly ever since the end of last year. This is what Chillers likes to do. And there's our consolidation range that we're in now. The good news is that it kind of works around these fib levels. So, you know, 786, 236 fib, that makes sense. 786 fib, 38.2, that makes sense. And then now these levels in the middle become support and resistance. So, for example, this 50% now here, this previous high high, is our resistance unless we can break above that and we tried yesterday and we couldn't we're going lower and we go down to the next one which is down here hundred and twelve so unless we can get above 132 I think that we continue lower to 112 before we can bounce and then maybe we go all the way back to the bottom of the trend line again we've got flat daily moving averages we're in between the daily moving averages for me that's like a no man's land it's not it's no trend and i would be very neutral and this would potentially become i don't think it will but it'd be a bit gash but potentially it could become uh you know a bit of a topping pattern Okay, link just broke out. Yay! Okay, well, some good news tonight then. Yay, link. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there she goes. Okay, 54778. Come on, link. Looks good, doesn't it? So now we could get one of those little cheeky little pullbacks. So it'll do this and then this. And then if you haven't got any, let it, do, let, let it give you some red candles and then buy the pullback and, and off it goes. So it looks good for Link. Well done. Thank you, Jay. Okay. KSM, Kusama was some one somebody in my group asked for. I have, this is a Q coin chart. I have put my fibs on from this launch price here, high to low. And look how each one of these fib levels has been really well respected. 236 fib, 38.2, we went through, but then with support, support, support. We did that 50% pivot level, 61.8, back to the 38.2 thing. Whenever your first swing in a rally, goes to the 61.8 and then you have a pullback. Your risk is you're going to always make a Gartley pattern at the 786 fib. And you would line, if this here, if this projects the 1.618 to those highs, let's do that. Then there we are. We've got our Gartley pattern, bearish Gartley pattern here lined up. So A, B, C. So this is our Gartley pattern. This is a trend continuation pattern. It points to at least a back to these lows and if not further back down to here. So um, if you are, uh, this is a good place to get out of this Kusama. Now, again, we're looking back to these lows first target. Okay, this 38.2 level potentially down here so for much further to fall for this one cute ksm now let's put our fibs on from here from the lows and we'll see where the 
bounce level comes in on the first one. A little bit lower, 87.825. We might have a bounce there and retest the highs. You know, crypto very often gives you a double top or a double bottom, doesn't it, before it does. So we wouldn't be surprised if we did this first time. Okay, or if and if we can't close below that, we're still in an uptrend. Nothing damage done. Okay, but below 87.825, bearish reversal uh, confirmed for Kusama KSM. Okay, next one is then we're going to do Atom Dusk PNT. So Atom Dusk PNT. Okay, so we've been looking at this quite closely in my group. Okay, because we will say, oh, okay, this looks like a very nice double bottom. This is the confirmation level here in the middle. If we're going to make a double bottom, a uh, double bottom. For now, it looks like a false breakout swing failure pattern, doesn't it? And so a swing failure pattern normally would just come back to the first level of support. I would say that that would be 50% of this candle, the big with a big green thrust day that would be the first place we would looking back to support or potentially we could draw it as in the 236 fib like this sometimes in the same place sometimes they're not okay so false breakout but the really annoying thing about this one is that this actually wasn't quite an equal low and so I have to say that this is looking a bit like an ABC correction, which we didn't want to see here in a regular ABC correction. So, first place I think we're coming back to is 3007. And so we failed to break out. This is a very bearish candle now. And I think we'll see follow through. And 3007 would be the first place that I would be looking for Cosmos Bitcoin to come back to. Sorry, not better news for that one. Um, dusk is next one. It's a very tempting chart, isn't it? Now, Dusk is down at levels we haven't traded at forever. I'm going to look at the weekly chart. And you can see where we got, got these fib levels. From this bounce in the downtrend sometimes when you overshoot levels more often than not you make an inverted head and shoulders pattern or something like that i'm not sure what it was but we have regained this level that we broke and it's now support and now if we're going to continue higher we really do need to get above this 236 fib level whenever i look at it though let's see where to where's the biggest correction i think it's there where do we put FIPS to decide this? Gosh. So if this is the start of the declining wedge, like this. Which it could be. So it's the declining wedge, so we angle in. Okay. So this is our kind of breakout level, third touch breakout, third touch false breakout level. And we need to get above the 200 moving average and this 236 fib. And that's at 378. So I feel like we're doing it. We failed at an important resistance. And I feel like we're doing a bigger ABC correction before we try again. So something like this really good support here when i look left at this level 287 so i would wait and see for a retest of back test of 287 and see what happens there otherwise the only way i would be tempted is back above this 200 moving average and this 236 fib level i think dusk has got just a bit too much resistance here and then pnt was requested here's pnt it's a brand new coin at binance so we've had a strong rally and a very slow, choppy overlapping. 
correction, which is finally broken out in PLT Bitcoin. So there's our wedge. Don't need to worry about that. What we really want to know is where are we going next? How far are we going to go? So whenever you've got a wedge like this, your first trouble ever is firstly the previous highs. You should also look at the closing prices and see if that's what's holding us up. So previous highs. And what if this is A, B, C down? And now we're going to go A, B, C up. And then still, it's just not ready, you know, it's just not ready. One of the things that makes me more bullish is that we're holding in the kind of top half, if you like. We haven't pulled back too far, but uh, yeah, bullish, but it needs to break out of this sideways range above uh, previous highs. Let's see what happens when we get there. Just gonna hmm. Yeah. Okay, if we do then we can project obviously this way. We'll do it like this. We're looking for ten thousand and nine, then we're looking for uh, 12,016. So 10,000 and then 12,000 if we can break out here in PNT. Okay, I know uh, I've really unfortunately run out of steam tonight. I will look at Zilliqa for you and then I'm going to have to call it night. Zilliqa. Thank you very much for staying while I'm uh, here we go. Okay. Welcome. Okay, let's see. So, yeah, Silica. I'm really neutral, Zilliqa. Um, our moving averages have gone flat. We're kind of clustered up around them. Um, now, if we're going to rally from here, and this wasn't just a false move, we will hold on to this 236 Fib level. We are back testing today and this daily 20 moving average. It's here at 202. Okay, see how this was support, support, look at the close prices, resistance. So 202 and our daily 20 moving average are where we need to hold support and make little uh, inside bars. So how are we holding on to the support? We're holding on to it really well, aren't we? So now we just need that trigger to break to the upside to give us this next leg higher. We need to break out of this consolidation. I haven't done it yet. We're right on support. So if you wanted to put your toe in and buy a little, you know very soon if you're wrong, if we keep going lower, obviously, won't we? Okay, and we're looking for 238, 254 up on the upside and so on. So yeah, it's a little bit coin. Uh, it does look a bit disappointing when you first look at it, but I do think it's got room and it is setting up to go higher from here. Hope that helps, infinity all infinity. All right, everyone, I will see you soon. Uh, I'll see you in a week. Thank you for coming.